I don't know if it was you or other member of the band, but I, I read somewhere that uh, he said that actually uh, Hacking's music was quite simple. And, you know, it's kind of funny because you are always labeled as prog music. And when people think yeah. about prog music, they, they don't think about simple. They think about more intricate and complicated music. So, for you, how do you see it? How do you see Hacking's see, music? Uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting point. I feel that that's an intricate, complex moment. And, um, but this is kind of just the post with uh, more quiet, heartfelt, emotional passages as well. So for me, it's all about get, striking the right balance within the music and not bombarding the listener with too much of one specific mood or sound. Um, and it's, it can be quite overbearing sometimes when you listen to certain music and it's just an onslaught of riffs and kind of scalar exercises and or whatever it is. Um, for me, that's a bit too much. So we try and create that contrast and balance and I guess what comes out is what, what comes out. But um, I personally love to listen to very chilled out music like bands like Volcano Choir, Bonnie Bear and the UK band called Elbow. And all of these guys really essentially just playing a few chords yeah. but it's more about more about how they play those chords and you know it's more about the emotion that they kind of channel into the music rather than how technically precise it is so uh, yeah i guess it's just a question of you know <laughs> working out that balance okay so um you guys are six in the band so that's six opinion when it comes to writing music or six people when it comes to touring. So have you ever thought of, oh, oh God, can we only be a trio and have uh, things recorded live? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it would be interesting. A lot, a lot of bands nowadays have um, stuff on backing tracks. Yeah, which is a kind of current trend, and that's understandable because sometimes it's hard to find the right members for the band. Um, but one thing what we wanted to do from the early days was, uh, yeah, make it as organic and natural as possible so we wanted you know, everyone to play during our live shows um so the band's been going quite a while now and uh, maybe well about 15 to 16 years since we actually came out with the original ideas and we auditioned lots of guys through the years until we found the ultimate lineup that we're happy with um but then yeah i, I can't imagine us ever getting to the point where we have stuff on the backing track. It, it, for me, it kind of takes away something from the music. Um, but I can completely understand how other guys do that and why they do it. But I think with our music, it kind of leans towards just the more natural way of playing, I guess. Yeah. So, in, it's one month until the album is released. Okay, but uh, these days, uh, with the internet and all these sites when they upload albums before the release is it's kind of hard sometimes. Uh, what's your point of view about this? Uh, will you feel violated if you see your album maybe in two days online, or actually you don't care about these issues? I think, yeah, that's just one of those things that is part of our industry. Um, and I guess you can see the, the positives in it. I mean, it essentially means that people want to listen to our music. And if if we are in a position that people feel that they should share our stuff illegally online, guess it suggests that we're big enough for people to listen to the music. But um, obviously there's the flip side of things that mean that bands suffer economically because of this, because they're, they're not seeing CD sales, which is ultimately why nowadays everything is focused towards playing live, um, which is a good thing because live music is a great thing and it means that bands can go out and hopefully people can understand that this is how they make a living this is how they exist so um yeah i mean there's definitely pros and cons for both sides of the argument but um i guess streaming as well plays a massive factor uh, nowadays with stuff like spotify <laughs> but uh it's just the, indus the industry is constantly going through this this uh, state of change, this state of flux. Um, so it's an interesting to be. It's interesting to be around now as this constantly changing. Yeah, 
And you know, since 2007, you released four albums, uh, I think a couple of EPs, and also this uh, live album that was released also. It's quite prolific for a prog band, or for any band actually, nowadays, <laughs> you know? Is it something that you are very creative and you have a lot of material, or is it just something that you just want to... People don't to forget you. I think we all have ideas and we all have experiences, and we always we just love making music. I, I personally love writing music. There's nothing I love more than creating and composing music. And for the last two albums, we've all got involved with this whole process, um, which is you no, know, it's given the band a, a fresh new approach of the writing. Um, and that, there's a lot that we want to say, and each of us in the band has, a, has their own voice. So we still got a lot of ideas, and we still got a lot of stuff to say. So I'm, I'm hoping we'll get the next album out in the next couple of years as well, and we'll just keep it going because there's nothing better than playing new music, I feel, live. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a fun process. Great. So just to finish the interview, I know you guys are also uh, fans of sci-fi. We can see that in your previous albums or video clips, everything. So, had you been seeing a good movie recently, a sci-fi movie? Oh yeah, I'm a huge film fan. Um, I just love one of my favorite directors is a guy called Denny Denny Villeneuve. Uh -huh. He's a Canadian, French Canadian, French Canadian guy. He's um, done a whole like host of amazing films. Did Enemy, Prisoner. Uh, he did a bunch of French films from from uh, back in the day, which were a bit more obscure but still amazing. But then he he's also the guy that did Blade Runner 2049 uh, fairly recently, and he completely nailed that and continued the franchise in such a an amazing way. And another film he did two years prior to that where it was called Arrival, uh -huh. which is one of the greatest sci-fi films, I feel, ever. It's just an amazing uh, depiction of how it would potentially be if aliens came um, to our world. It's all about how we would communicate with them. It's just an interesting, really interesting way of looking at it, which, um, like, like, he's just so unique in, in the way he directs stuff. But yeah, they're probably my favorite two releases really over the last few years.